Hello guys, welcome to Heartway at Home. Thank you guys for tuning in. If this, is, this church is making an impact in your heart, in your life, in the lives of others, go ahead and like, share, subscribe, so that you can go ahead and share it with your friend, with your family members, if this ministry is impacting you. As well, you can go to heartwaychurch.com and be a part of our community there, and also give if that's tugging on your heart as well. We have a great message coming from you for you today by Gabby and Sanary Prayer by Danny. Thank you so much. Have a good week. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All my beautiful Heartway people, I invite you to take your seats. My favorite part of our Sunday morning experience is getting to practice centering prayer with each and every one of you. And normally I'm not the one up here. We have some incredible guides who take us on this journey within. Uh, but today I have the opportunity of, of leading us and, and guiding us in centering prayer. And I just want to invite you to close your eyes, get comfortable, sit in an upright position, and just take a moment here to slow down. Breathe deeply. Breathe slowly. Breathe intentionally. Bring your attention to every inhale and every exhale. Inhale peace. And exhale all of your stresses. I invite you to bring your attention to any part of your body where you may feel a little bit of tension or stress. Maybe it's your neck, your shoulders. Maybe you feel some pressure in your head. And just breathe into that space. There's no goal in this moment, no aim, other than to simply be. Begin to observe the movements of your mind And notice how impersonal the process of thinking is. Are you choosing your next thought? Or does it just appear? But when we cling to our thoughts and we create a sense of identity around our thinking, We lose sight of the stillness that we truly are. As you learn how to become the observer of the mind, you're able to experience a peace that surpasses all understanding. This peace is what you are. And it's always, always present.
the worst thing that could ever happen to you is what is happening in your mind. So to learn how to relate to your thinking, how to be a witness of your thoughts without attachment or identification really makes you immovable. Immovable awareness. This is what the mystics call the presence of God within. Stillness is something that you practice. And the more you practice, the easier it becomes. Doesn't matter what you may be feeling or what you may be going through. If you're able to tap into this stillness, You're home free. And your breath will take you there. Your breath will always take you there. You cannot breathe in the past. You cannot breathe in the future. The breath is always now. By bringing our attention to our breath, we can cleanse the palate. I'm going to read to you a psalm. And I invite you to listen with your heart. Allow these words to saturate you and to fill your being. Psalm 16. Unnameable God, I feel you with me at every moment. You are my food, my drink, my sunlight, and the air I breathe. You are the ground I have built on and the beauty that rejoices my heart. I give thanks to you at all times for lifting me from my confusion, for teaching me in the dark and showing me the path of life. I have come to the center of the universe. I rest in your perfect love. In your presence, there is fullness of joy and blessedness forever and ever. Sometimes we avoid this silence because we fear it. We're afraid of what's there. And we spend our lives trying to escape the noise, forget the misery, repress the pain. 
but you cannot run away from yourself forever. It is a spiritual practice, this getting comfortable with being still. But this stillness is your peace. And it is always there with you. Meditation is the ultimate release. A release of control. A release of identity. A release of your will. So that God's will may be done in you. Continue bringing your attention to your breath. Nice, slow inhale. With a beautiful, strong exhale. God, we welcome your presence with us. We thank you that you fill our emptiness with yourself. I invite you to gently open up your eyes, bring yourself back. Maybe stretch a little bit, bring a smile to your face. Thank you for joining us for this moment of Centering Prayer. Love you. Happy Sunday, everybody. How's everyone doing today? We're good. Well, my name is Gabby. For those of you who may not know me, I have been a part of Heartway since 2017. Uh, I came here uh, broken, lost, confused, all of the above I was going through. And this place genuinely changed my whole life. I've been consistently coming here since then. And God has worked through me in so many ways, and I'm just so blessed and honored to be a part of this community, to be given the opportunity to be up here, uh, to be able to speak. It means a lot to me, so I'm very grateful, and I just want to thank all of you for being here. And I hope that my message can speak to you today, this message that God really has planted into my heart, and I hope that it syncs with you too. So it's called Unwavering Faith, and this is something I'm so excited about. I am so passionate when it comes to faith, because I believe without faith, you really You can't experience the abundance that God has for you. Everything that you have that God has for you is experienced through this faith. So this past week, Talon, uh, Talon's my boyfriend and my one of my greatest teachers, honestly. I mean, you want to think of a true yogi, like the Buddha, you know, the middle way, like that's him. And he he blesses me so much. I I read once in this book with Gabby Bernstein, if you're like new into your spirituality, she explains things so beautifully and, and so easy to understand. And she explained that if you're starting to believe in this consciousness of God, this energy, you know, you got to be strong with it and you have to ask for what it is that you want. So she said in the book 
that if you want God to speak to you, you have to tell him how you want him to speak to you. So some people, they, they love the numbers, right? Like the angel numbers. They see one, 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 they're like, that's God, they know. Some people, it's animals, animals speak to them. But for me, I am stubborn, like I am real stubborn, and I, God knows I need someone to speak to me and tell me what I need to hear. And I'm so blessed because I have that person in my life that's talent that he is my mirror and he through him I get to experience so much of God so I want to share this picture uh, of this week we went to Colorado we went to the mountains and he took me snowmobiling which was so fun I haven't done anything in the snow so that was awesome but he uh, the main reason I'm bringing this up is because I realize that another way that I'm starting to experience God is through nature Nature is, I mean, the abundance that you see of nature. When you see the mountains, when you see the ocean, you know, it's just, you can't even, you can't wrap your mind around it, which is exactly what God is. You can't wrap your mind around God. So in this picture, you know, I'm on the snowmobile and mind you, I'm not that good <laughs> at these types of things. So it's going real fast, but I'm the last one in the back and I'm taking my time because I start to look and tears start to, to fill me up. And I'm, I'm, I'm crying here by myself in my helmet. Thankfully, no one can see me. So, you know, I'm not embarrassed. I'm just having a moment with myself. And I look out and I'm like, how can anyone not believe in God if you see all of this? And then I realize a lot of people haven't experienced nature and haven't really seen what is out there. We're so trapped in our current situation and what we physically see with our two eyes that we don't see beyond, right? And so I'm here in these mountains and I'm experiencing all of this beauty and I realize, man, if I had all the money in the world, this is what I would do. I would take people out and I would show them all of God's wonders because then you can start to realize the abundance that's within you. You see, we think that we're just only these humans and only the circumstances that we're going through, right? But God didn't only create you. God created this entire universe and there is no separation from you or those mountains or that ocean or the galaxy above you. You know what I mean? So I think it's until we really see it that we start to understand the power in us as well. You feel me? Yeah. Okay, good, good. We're together. So let's go into explaining what unwavering faith is. So this is my understanding of how I want to explain it. It's a faith that does not fall to circumstance. It's a faith that is constant through all that is experienced, a faith that is confident in the power of the unknown. You see, faith can't be experienced through the mind. It's not something you experience intellectually. Faith is only experienced through a knowing in your soul. Number one, you got to know you have a soul. You got to know there's something deeper within you. That's where you start to experience it. So here in Hebrews 11.1, 1, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Faith is like the wind. You feel it. You know it's there. But you can't hold on to it. You can't grab onto it. You can't, you know, scientifically. So, I mean, you can't scientifically. But you know what I mean? You can't just hold on to it and be like, I know that it's there. But you just feel it. And you have to really go with this gut, this knowing within yourself. We all have an inner compass inside of us. And that's that knowing. But this knowing is more than just that gut feeling I was saying. This is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. The Holy Spirit is speaking to us at all times, constantly. But it's only us that we close ourselves off to it. There are so many stories that people can share, just like Giselle shared up here, of how the Holy Spirit kind of checked her, right? But we close ourselves off and we're not open to really hear what's going on and what we need to do. Faith is is trusting in something that we can't explicitly prove. Can we go into the next one, please? 
this is the formula that I borrowed from Mike Todd. He's a pastor at Transformation Church that I just recently found, and he's awesome. I highly recommend listening to him. But the way he put it was intellectual agreement plus trust equals faith. So like I explained earlier, it's not going to come from something necessarily in the mind. But what you do have to switch is understanding that everything that's happened was not a coincidence. It wasn't just a fluke. You have to really honor and stand strong in knowing that it was God that made that happen. It was God that opened up that door. It was God that put, pulled you out of that rut. You feel me? You really have to understand and know in your mind that no, it's not just this coincidence. It's God really working through you. And then we go into trust. Trust is a very tricky thing. As a woman who has had many trust issues, who has dealt with daddy issues, who has been in abusive relationships, who has self-sabotaged, as a human, I felt very flawed. And, you know, I started to think about trust, and I realized that, you see, we think of God as a being, like a human being, and then we call him our father. So then we already illustrate him as a man because our mind always has to think of, okay, I have to put a person to this. God is not a man. God is not flawed. He is not a human. You understand that God is the creator and the created. He creates everything within us. So God is so we are more like God than God is like us. And this was something that Talon brought to my attention. We have these awesome walks on Sundays and they're just so beautiful because we get to talk with each other and God is our, our main conversation, honestly, because that's a big part of our lives. And he brought this up to me. He's like, you know, God really, we're the ones that's like God. God's not like us. And I started to think about it and I realized that's such a good thing. When you really realize that God is not like us, we're made in his image, it means that God has no limitations. God is not flawed. God is not restricted within the bounds of the mind. You see, it is our mind that limits us because the power is already inside. God already gave us the key to the kingdom. It's inside of you. All the answers are there. But it's the mind. <laughs> You feel me? And that's, that, <laughs> I want you guys to feel me on that because that's a huge thing when you really realize that you can have anything you want in this world because God can do anything. You know, last, was it last Sunday or a couple Sundays ago, Jenny was singing and she said that I like really got into it when I came into the meditation because I was saying like, God moves mountains, God can change anything. He was, she was like, yeah, you got that in you, but that's what I really mean today. I want to give that type of energy to you guys today. Like if you really think that God is small and that he can't change your circumstance, you got to switch it up. Because God can do anything and everything, but it is in his time and it has to be for his purpose as well. You see, we get so caught up on what we want and what we need and what we believe we deserve. We're very entitled children. We're very entitled children. And it's okay. I'm, I'm the first one to say that I want what I want when I want it, but that's not how God works. God is on his time. And you have to understand as well that you're not his only child and you're not his only creation. We only think of creation in the human form. And creation is all. It's nature, right? It's the sky. It's the ocean. It's the mountains. It's the bugs that you don't like. <laughs> it's the people. You know, it's everything. So God is not only working in your favor, but it's in his favor. It's in the highest good. It's for the every, you know, for everyone, all inclusive. So I want to repeat to you again, the formula, which is intellectual agreement plus trust is going to give you the faith. Let's move on to, are you a seasonal believer? 
I, I want to get very honest with you guys today, and I'm bringing this up because I have been a seasonal believer. In my past, there have a lot of unfortunate things have happened to me. And I put myself in a lot of very unfortunate situations. But a lot of bad things happened to me. There's people that definitely took advantage of me, that hurt me. I experienced a lot of things. But every time that something happened, I lost my faith. And I was like, okay, well, you know, God didn't give me the job that I wanted. I still don't have the boyfriend that I want of my dreams. You know, I still don't have this. I don't have that. And then I'm like, oh, well, I guess God just forgot about me. You see, it's when we're in our darkest moments, when we're struggling the most, that you have to have the strongest faith. That's when you really have to pick yourself up and know that it's not you, but it's God that's going to walk you through this. But we forget. And that's the whole purpose of this life. It's that we got to remember what we have forgotten. That's why I love being around very little babies. You know, the ones that don't make too much noise, the cute ones. I like those little babies. <laughs> but they remind you, they, they show you the innocence and they have so much knowing because they just left, you know, they just left God, I feel like. They just left the source. They're so connected. And it's us that we move so far away from our source. We're the ones that start to forget. We're the ones that just start to think that it's only this material 3D world. Oh, man, my friends, there's so much magic in this world. And it's not magic that gets pulled out of a hat like a bunny rabbit. No, it is this entire universe God is so creative. He wants to create a world that is beautiful in all eyes, which means that you might not understand why something is happening. You might not understand why you're going through certain things. You might not understand why you still haven't gotten that promotion you've been waiting for, or you still haven't met the man of your dreams or woman of your dreams. But you have to stay strong in faith. Our mind, Danny brought this up. I mean, we talk about this all the time. Our mind is going to dictate your reality. And I want to take it a little bit on a different side of what are you confident in? What you are confident in is what you're going to experience and what's going to be. You know, the Gen Z population, uh, they're messing it all up. I, I'm not a huge fan uh, because we worked hard to have high-waisted jeans so I don't have to work out as much. You know, I can hide it. Um, I loved my side part. I, there's a lot of things that the Gen Zs are just getting rid of, you know? And, and it's funny because we follow it. Like, my hair's on a half part. I got the flare jeans. You know, we follow it because it's a trend. But now... What if God asked you to follow what he says? What if he asked you to leave that job that's not serving to you? What if he asked you to leave that partner that's no longer serving you? Are you going to do it? You see, the thing is, God drops lots of words. He downloads information into you, and he's just waiting for you to grab onto it. You know what God spoke to me and told me I needed to do? And he didn't even speak it to me. He spoke it through my partner and through him, I realized what I needed to do. I stopped drinking alcohol, when was it, January like 15th or something. It hasn't been that long, but it feels like it's been a while. And I will tell you, I'm not going back. I mean, I might fall, but I know now that this is what I was meant to do. And if I would have heard this maybe a year ago, and I actually did probably hear it a few years ago. I wasn't ready to listen. I'm like, no, nah, I'm trying to have fun. Like, I was like, that's not, I'm not there yet. And that's what happens with a lot of us. God asks you to do something, but you're not ready to hear it. And you're not ready to really step into that. And that's okay. I want you to know that this relationship with God, you really have to build it on your own. And you can't rush it. It has to be genuine. It has to be true. It has to be authentic. So when God asks you to do something, if you've built this relationship, then you're going to be ready. You know, I didn't think that I, well, the reason I stopped drinking was because we're doing this thing called 75 hard. And I figured, you know, I want to be healthy. It's the start of the new year. Why not? Well, God has worked 
through me during this time. I have seen parts of my past that I wish I had never had to relive, but God needed me to sit with myself sober, clear of mind so that I could hear him and he could remind me the Gabby of the past, she's really in the past and we love her. We are grateful for her and all that she experienced because now you're the woman you are today. But I had to take a moment and really listen and be obedient. That's a huge part is the obedience, guys. You see, and I don't want you to think of it, obedience, in, um, in such a like harsh way. Because you're going to fall. We're going to make mistakes. I find obedience in the sense of consistently coming back to God. That's my obedience to him. I believe in him so much. I am so committed to my faith in him and my relationship in him that even when I mess up, I don't walk away. I remember that I am so filled with his power and that I inherently already have everything that I need inside of me, that I deserve his love, that I deserve the worthiness that God gives me. So it starts from that. And we have to also remember that we all have so many gifts. We all really do. And some of us are really blessed that our gift becomes our purpose. You know, this, sitting, standing here speaking to you, fills my heart because I know that I'm fulfilling one of God's purposes through me. But we get really caught up on what we want and what we believe our purpose is, and we forget that we're here to fulfill God's purpose. And that should be something that excites you. You should be excited about that, about being able to fulfill the purpose of the greatest energy in this universe, the energy that created all of this. But it starts with your confidence and what you really believe in and what you're going to believe in your mind. You have to be confident of the very thing that he who began the good work in you will carry it out into completion. But it's on his time. I started coming, like I said, in 2017. The woman then compared to the woman now, it's night and day. And this woman that I'm here right now, she was always there, but I couldn't see her because I was so clouded with my own thoughts versus clearing my thoughts and allowing God to speak into me and show me who I really am at my core, at my soul. What happens though, is that we lose hope. That's the biggest thing, guys. If you lose hope, you lose it all. Hope is what fuels faith. You have to have hope. You have to believe that God will do anything for you and that you can do it with God. There's no limitations for you, but you have to keep the hope. You know, uh, something else that Mike Todd said, I I listened to a sermon of his, and this really spoke to me, was that what seems like an impossible idea in one season becomes faith in another. I want you to really let that sink in because God's going to speak to you and he's going to give you some wild ideas. He's going to tell you some things that you're probably going to think, oh, I can't do that. You know, I had this thought of creating a foundation where I have all this money and I get to take people who have never been to the mountains and I take them, you know, skiing or I get to do something. And I'm like, ah, that's kind of a wild idea, Gabby. Like, you're not going to be able to do that. Well, why not? You see, you can't just believe in one season and then, you know, be like, ah, no, I'm not going to believe anymore. That wild idea, then when it actually happens, then people say it was faith. No, it was faith all along. You have to really believe that and be strong and confident in that. You know, facts, they can't change the truth. I don't want to disregard that there are certain circumstances that are a lot, that are very difficult, that maybe with just your human self, you can't change. But the truth 
can change facts. And the truth is God. God will change any circumstance. God will change your mind. You know, there's someone very close to me in my family who has had uh, multiple religions and multiple changes in his life. And my brother asked me, do you really believe that this time this person's really changing, that this person is, is really committed? And you know, all I could say was, I believe that he's committed because God can change anyone. It doesn't matter what you've done in your past. It doesn't matter what you've experienced. It doesn't matter what you thought in your mind. God can change people because God already knows who you are at your core, at your soul. So God doesn't want you to get stuck believing or playing small. When you're ready, when you're really ready to transform your life, you're right here. God's ready. He's ready to push you through. But you have to let go of the reins. You see, we clench on, we attach, we hold on so much to what's happened to us in the past, to what we've experienced that we can't receive because we're holding on so tightly. I don't know who needs to hear this, but you're the only one keeping you in your suffering. I know that sounds tough, and I know that's a hard pill to swallow, but it's true. When you let go and really let God in, you're going to start to recognize that all of the trials and tribulations you went through were lessons. Lessons are also miracles. Miracles are not only shaped in the form of a present or some money or an incredible partner. That miracle might be the most unfortunate lesson you experienced in your life. My greatest miracle was that I went to jail. I was locked up, couldn't go nowhere, couldn't talk to anyone other than God for a long time. My life changed when I experienced my darkest and deepest moment. When I fell so low, God picked me up. When I thought I couldn't get up, God grabbed me. When I thought I was alone, God hugged me. But he could only embrace me if I allowed him to embrace me. You see, God gives us free will. So he's going to give you the free will to live in your suffering, to live in your past, to continue to only think about the future instead of being in the right now. God, only want, God wants you always, but he wants you when you're ready. He's not an overbearing parent. <laughs> He's a gentle, loving parent that gives you so much grace. Can we put that next slide, please? We cannot attain the presence of God because we are already totally in the presence of God. What's absent is awareness. Danny talks about this guy all the time, so I figured I'd look him up and see if he was good, and he's pretty good. <laughs> Do you understand that you don't have to search for God? Do you really know that you don't have to do anything for God to be here with you? Do you really understand that because you were made in the image of God, God is already in you? He dropped little parts in, in, of him in you. But we're so worried about finding our, our happiness, finding ourselves, finding God. You're the one that's lost. God has been there the whole time. And he is there because he's in you. And that's what I feel like this is saying. It's We have the absence of the awareness. Our awareness is going to transcend into our experiences of God. God is always there. We just don't really pay attention. We don't hear. We don't listen because we don't want to. And maybe we don't see because we don't want to. And maybe we're not ready. And I want to tell you that it's really okay to not be ready. 
But just know that you're going to live in that past and that suffering until you genuinely decide to let it go. And I feel like that's so powerful to know because it gives you a little bit of sense of control in the sense that you can decide. You can decide to change your life with God. You can decide to forgive. You know what unwavering faith gives you? The opportunity to forgive those that hurt you, to let go of what they've done to you, to let go of what you've done or haven't done. God forgave you, so forgive yourself and forgive those around you. I remember when I was young, it was so hard for me to forgive. I was, I was an angry girl. I really was. I, I, it was difficult for me because I would just be like, well, they did me wrong. So that's it. I'm done with them. I mean, you can't be that way the rest of your life. You're going to have no, no friends. You're going to have no one in your life. But then my mom told me one day, she sat me down and she looked me in the eyes and she said, Gabby, if you don't forgive, is it rencor? That, that anger inside of you is going to eat you up. And it's only going to hurt you. We think that holding on and being upset at what someone else did is going to hurt them. No. No, no, boo-boo. It hurts you. It hurts you real bad. Only you. And it keeps you in the past. Can we put the next slide, please? God is not committed to your understanding, but to your obedience. It is through our obedience that you will begin to understand, that we will begin to understand. When I wrote this, I was like, I don't know how they're going to feel about the word obedient. I'm like, maybe that's too much. But it's the truth. Anything you do in life, if you want it to really happen, you have to be what? Consistent and obedient to it. And that's what God wants. And I also added that you'll begin to understand because truthfully, you may never understand. We may never understand why God does certain things and why he doesn't do certain things. But that's going to be a risk you have to be willing to take. You see, if you're going to be fully trusting of God. It's not only a, only when you want to or when it's convenient for you. You feel me? It has to be that you're all in, even when it doesn't work in your favor, even when it doesn't work for how you want it to go. But we have to be obedient. Sometimes we have to sacrifice things that we love, things that we're so attached to, things that make us, might make us very, very happy we might have to let it go. And that's where the obedience comes in. Let's go to the next slide, please. How to have faith that will transform. So we've talked about a lot of different things here about unwavering faith. And this unwavering faith it's going to open up doors for you that I don't even think you can imagine are possible for you. But they're there. And these are a few ways that you can really attain that. One is through God consciousness, which is the understanding that we are not separate from God. We are one with him. You see, you can co-create the life that you wish to experience. You've heard the word manifestation, manifesting. The secret said it best. They, they explained. They wrote it all out for you, except they didn't tell you. They just saw it, said it as the energy. But that energy is God. And he deserves the honor of us saying that God is the one doing this and that we're doing it with God. You see, that's where the obedience comes in because we get really caught up on it's us and our ego, you see, we want, I don't know if fame is the right word, but we want like all the credit. We want all the credit because it makes us feel good. We want to be told, oh, Gabby, you did so good. Great job up there. No, God did so good in me. 
because I work with God. I've opened myself so much that now God works in and through me. God can do the same thing for you, but you have to be willing to let go of that part of yourself that you hold on to so much. That identity that you hold on to, you have to let it go so that God can create through you. You understand if you keep yourself in this box of who you believe you are, you're limited. There's no limitations for God. So don't put them on yourself. Create with God. The next part is hope. Like I said, is the gasoline that fuels faith. Trust in God with confidence. Don't waver at the first setback. This is so, it's like the smallest, but the biggest thing. There's going to be so many times in life that you're going to feel like you have to let go in the sense of like that you have to, that you can't keep going anymore. And you know what? There's a lot of things that we experience that are really tough, that are really scary. And honestly, maybe as a human by yourself, you can't get through it, but you can do it with God. God can do it. Let go and allow him to do that for you. Sit with God. And I put just a few examples, but genuinely find out how you connect best with God. For some people, it's this. For me, it's definitely connecting in this way. I love worshiping together. I love listening to a good message. I love the energy that we cultivate together. It really makes me feel so connected to God. Another way is through yoga and meditation. I practice on a daily basis. I have found that for myself, and now it's my practice. Because this relationship that you're developing with God, this unwavering faith that you're creating for yourself with God, it takes practice. It doesn't happen overnight. Remember, 2017, I just got out of jail. My life was turned upside down, to say the least. It's 2022. I had to wait a while before I was ready to own everything that I had experienced, until I was ready to really believe with faith that it didn't matter what happened in my life, it doesn't matter who he takes out of my life or who he brings in my life, it doesn't matter what job he changes for me, it doesn't matter what he does anymore, because I'm in, I'm all in. And you gotta really ask yourself, how in are you? And I'm not trying to question your faith or your connection with God. I want you to genuinely and honestly sit with yourself and ask, how confident am I in God? Not how confident am I in myself, in what's in my mind. How confident am I in what God can do for me and through me? Do I really believe that I am a child of God? Do I really believe that I have the keys to the kingdom? You see, heaven is a state of mind, just as hell is. When we start to doubt, when we start to fear, to me, that's the enemy stepping on in. You have to understand that energy goes both ways. There's light and there's dark. So we're going to experience those dark times. What's going to be your light? What's going to brighten up those dark spaces? Because in the dark, we get lost and we forget what we know, that God is the one working with us, right? That God is protecting us and guiding us even through those difficult times in our lives. But you have to develop a practice and you have to develop a practice that you enjoy because if not, you won't do it. And this has to be something that you do consistently. You know, when I, was, when I was away <laughs> for some time, God told me to wake up before the sun rised every day. And it was, it was very different for me because it was like at like 3.30, 4 a.m. And on the dot, I was up. Like it was so weird because, you know, I would never wake up at that time. And I woke up and I asked, I was at first asking myself, why go back to bed? And then I started to realize I needed to just sit and listen. 
So then I started to wake up. I would sit on my bed. I would listen. I would meditate with God. That was before I even really knew what meditation was. You see, I now you guys all know me as the yogi and the meditation centering prayer girl here, but I was the opposite. I didn't even know what that was until God showed me. A few months later, I started waking up, getting off of my bed, and I had to tell my bunkie, like, don't get scared. I'm going to start doing something in the mornings. I would take my little comforter, I'd put it on the ground, and I started kneeling. I started kneeling, and I started just humbly surrendering to God at that time every day. And I didn't speak. I didn't ask for anything. I just listened. All God wants is to be with you to sit with you, to talk to you, to remind you of everything that you are. It's just we distract ourselves. So ask yourself, how much faith do I really have? How much stake do I have in the game? Am I really in? <laughs> Next, yeah, there we go. And write down what the Holy Spirit tells you. The inner guide is the Holy Spirit, which is God communing with you. And this is a big part of that manifestation, creating what you want. You see, God tells you things and then we forget them. I mean, I forget things in five minutes. So I realize I really have to start writing things down. If God tells me that I'm going to have this foundation one day, I'm going to write it down. And it might not happen for another 20, 30 years, but how cool will it be when I look back? And I'm like, wow, God really spoke this into existence because if I forget that he told me that uh, all those years ago, then I might think that it was me. I might forget and I might, my ego might step in and say, oh, Gabby, you're so great. Look at what you're doing. No, God already planted that seed years ago. So you got to write things down. You have to believe it. Write it with confidence. Release the ego's need to be the one who takes ownership of any transformation or good work. Understand that it's God who works in and through you. This is so big. This is what we're talking about, letting go of the ego, letting go of the mind. Scarcity holds knowledge. Abundance shares the wisdom that God gives you. This is such a great point to talk about because we're so afraid to give. And not only money. We're afraid to share our knowledge sometimes. We're afraid to share, like she was saying, oh, my secrets. I don't want to share my secrets. Those are mine. They're God's. If you are not willing to help all of God's children, it's not that God's going to look past you, but you're just not the right vessel to use at this time because he wants to reach the masses. He doesn't want to only reach one person. So you have to remember that whatever you're doing, what's your intention behind it? Why are you really doing what you're doing? So before you ask God for what you want, why don't you tell God what you're going to do with what you get? Really sit with yourself and understand that first. Why? I had to, I had to ask myself that. Gabby, why do you want to go up here and speak? Why do you want to be a spiritual leader? Why do you want to guide people? And at first, I felt like I actually couldn't do it. I thought that I wasn't equipped yet, but that was because I was still thinking with my mind. I was still thinking that Gabby wanted this, Gabby the personality, right? But then I realized God wants this for me. God wants me to share this message so that I can share with the rest of all of his children. When you know your intention and it's set, with everyone in mind, not only yourself, God is more than ready to get, to get you there. So set your intentions. Let go of the mind. So I want to end here with, with this uh, quote that I have here. And I just want to make sure I didn't forget nothing. 
<laughs> looking through my notes. <laughs> so I want to read this to you, and it's from the Gita. When meditation is mastered, the mind is unwavering, like the flame of a lamp in a windless place. In the still mind, in the depths of meditation, the self reveals itself. Beholding the self by means of the self, an aspirant knows the joy and peace of complete fulfillment, having attained that abiding joy beyond the senses, revealed in the still mind, they never swerve from the eternal truth. They desire nothing else and cannot be shaken by the heaviest burden of sorrow. Now this is a lot, I know. And what this is saying is that once you've really connected and centered with God, the true self shows you who you are. God shows you who you are. When you really understand that you have everything inside of you and that you are just a vessel for God to work in and through, you're no longer seeking anything else. You no longer need anything else. You no longer need the credit. You no longer need the fame. God will give you all of it and more. God will give you so much money, you don't even know what to do with it. God will give you the most amazing partner when you're ready for it. God will give you anything that you desire when your intention is connected with God when you're connected with your source. But the only way to recognize your truth is through truth. And just like Danny said last week, the only truth we really know is that God is real and that God is love. Amen. Let me pray for you all. God, we just want to thank you so much for the opportunity to be here with you. We understand that it is through our sacrifice and our obedience that we will experience all of your wonders. We understand that the more that we let go, the more we will receive. We are now claiming confidently that we have unwavering faith. We will not fall to circumstance. We will not forget what you have done and what you can do. We are connected to you. We love you and we honor you. In your name, amen. Thank you, God.